I think it's phenomenal. It's really, really nice. It's gorgeous. I love it. I love the water in the desert. Beautiful. What a nice place to come after a long walk. I, I just got here. I really like this place. I think it's astounding. This is another place that I can bring kids and neighbors when uh, friends from out of town to come and see water. Oh, it's great. We're, we're really enjoying it. It's a really nice addition to the neighborhood. This is wonderful. It's beautiful. This really, I think, puts Phoenix on the map as far as uh, a quality arts project. And it's something you would see in a bigger city like Chicago or San Francisco. I think there's just a broader recognition that art is a tremendously valuable part of our community, that we just literally cannot live without it. I'm proud to be a part of a community that values public art. I think, uh, I personally think art is important. Public art to me is the ability for us to beautify the environment. Public art's um, really important to me because it's, I mean, it's part of who I am. It's how I express myself. Art is, it, it's, it's life. Public art has the ability, as all good art does, to challenge us. It's not always about pleasing us. It's about helping us to see the world from a different point of view. In Phoenix, artists have improved the appearance and function of everything from city streets, canals, parks, and community centers, to water treatment plants, airports, transit and recycling centers, and freeway sound walls, bridges, and overpasses. The new thinking and collaborations that artists, engineers, architects, and landscape architects have brought to building a better city have made Phoenix a national leader in expanding the role of art in urban design. The works have all varied from large to small, some permanent, others temporary. The one constant has been the growing expectation that art and innovations should shape the city we make, that beauty belongs to all of us in all of our public buildings, spaces, and infrastructure. This didn't happen overnight. Art was, uh, in some respects, very young uh, in our community in the 1980s in public places. We had it, but it was not uh, something that in every project you thought about. I think that generally outside of Phoenix, it was known as sort of a cultural desert, but there are a lot of talented people here and a lot of very creative people who, a number of whom were in the city and bureaucrats who were uh, very interested in doing something different. In 1986, the Phoenix Mayor and City Council approved the city's public art program. It was felt by the powers that be uh, that it was important to use art as a way to grow the city and to make the city a more interesting place to be. At first, the Office of Arts and Culture was commissioned to do 86 projects, but it took only one to get Phoenix national recognition. That was the, the overpass at Thomas Road, which was 700 linear feet and involved three actually street overpasses. Artist Marilyn Swack and engineer Jerry Cannon, with two very different backgrounds, teamed up together to design and create the overpass. This was really the first one where uh, the Phoenix Public Art Program was uh, really living up to its, uh, its mission, which was to engage artists in infrastructure and make art visible in the community. The Thomas Road Overpass offered an opportunity for the community to actually come out, work with the artists, work with the contracting team to participate in the development of the infrastructure. And so you had a situation where more than 400 people came out to work with the artist Marilyn's Walk to bring mementos from their own lives, keys from houses that used to stand on the site. And so instead of being a divisive feature in the landscape, this single project became a way for people to come out and come together. The success of this project led the city to bring artists in to design similar bridges. My first sketch was just totally flat, basic, and, and then to see it like this, it just makes your heart start pumping. Everyone's input was in it, and sometimes we couldn't do it because of a structural conflict. Um, sometimes we had to change the mesh. We never work with artists. We are all engineers. All engineers huddle, and we get answers and solutions within ourselves. It was exciting, very fast, and uh, exciting project.
sometimes these projects enable not only the artists, but also landscape architects, architects, and engineers to ask questions about, can we do it this way? Or can we do it that way that help to develop newer thinking about our public spaces and infrastructure? The 27th Avenue Solid Waste Management Facility exemplified that innovative new approach. Built in 1993, it received national attention and awards for making education central to the city's recycling efforts. We're often accustomed to how artwork can change the appearance of things, but some of the more interesting ways in which public art has been effective in Phoenix is that it helps to expand the function of the facilities we build. Uh, it brings education, brings ex expression, brings community involvement. I think artists can play a huge role in uh, helping us meet our goal and helping uh, reducing the amount of materials that we use um, and throw away. They're the creative thinkers when you, when you think about this on what you can do with these different resources or trash that we have in our garbage. There's a lot of schools now that are taking plastic bottles, cardboard boxes, and they're using them into their programs to create art. And those kids are learning not only the importance of, of, of creating their artistic side, but they're also learning about recycling and reusing as well. The provision of water and sewer services in a large city like ours is for the most part an industrial undertaking. But it's important for us to tell our story. And one of the best ways to tell our story is through public art. We want to be an amenity in a community so that people understand the value of the services that we bring to their neighborhoods, to their businesses, to their quality of life. The waterworks at Arizona Falls transformed a fenced-off hydroelectric plant on the Arizona Canal just east of 56th Street into a cooling destination and public space. That's a really important amenity to our community. It's a public art piece, but it centers around water, and there's really no better way for us to tell our story than for people to enjoy the art and the, and the water together. This link between water and art has helped to transform sections of the city's canals into active recreational corridors. These projects have helped connect communities and provide easier bicycle and walking access to many canal trails. Art and water also come together to improve the appearance of water and sewer facilities. Our facilities tend to be behind big walls, and so it is very difficult for us to educate the public on the importance of what we bring to the community and also the importance of conserving our precious water supplies. So a great way to speak to the community, to speak to children, to really educate people on the provision of these services is through public art, and that's why we're so proud to partner in these efforts. While raising expectations for the design of water and other key city facilities, public art has also added added new vibrancy to the fabric of downtown and other destinations. Citizens need to demand quality. They need to say, no, I want to walk down a street that has shade, that has trees, that has the best practices of complete streets, and that then has these wonderful markers of public art to be the nodes in that fabric. I was working on this project and I came across a line from Ralph Waldo Emerson, the American poet, adopt the pace of nature, her secret is patience. And that began to explain everything about this place, this sculpture. I interviewed the ASU Geology Museum curator and he told me this area was covered with oceans at one time and the fossil record shows marine life lived here. So I also liked the idea that this would be the structure of desert plants, it would be the structure of storms in the desert, monsoon clouds and tornadoes, but it could also be read as some prehistoric marine life, some large animal that somehow is misplaced in its time period. Roosevelt Rose Shadow Play, located at Roosevelt and 2nd Street, is another great recent example of public art that is both useful and beautiful. My interest is really the intersection between technology and art and architecture and public space. So for me, this project is a perfect opportunity to transform a traffic median into a public space and to think about changing the um, context so it's no longer about personal shade 
you know, but about a kind of collective shade. Public art has also brought this inventive approach to shade the city's growing number of public transit park and ride lots where artist Mary Lucking has developed a new kind of waiting area for early morning commuters. The shade structures help to solve a very essential problem for transit riders and that is early in the morning the sun is not overhead but it's coming across the horizon so she created vertical shade that allows riders to sit and also stand behind a beautiful screen. Fast forward to one of the busiest airports in the country. Art collections, murals, and the award-winning Terrazzo floors. The airport is the front door to the state of Arizona. Sky Harbor is oftentimes the very first and the last things that visitors uh, see when they come to Arizona. There's so much art that, has, that exists both in terms of collections as well as art built into our facilities that allows us to show off who Arizona is uh, to the visitors that come through uh, the airport. Um, I often say some of the most important parts of life happen coming through our airport. The airport is an extension of our community. The extension of community is inclusive not only to the artists, but to local construction and trade workers, which means jobs. And that is good for the economy. It comes to public arts involvement in the local economy. We've been tracking these numbers and more than 80% of the funds that go to public art in this city are contracted through local builders. We forget that our cities are still very much built by hand. Well, who builds those things? The artists design these projects, a lot of these large-scale infrastructure projects, but it's our contracting trades, our fabrication trades that are the ones who interpret the unique visions that artists have. So in a very real way, it's the workers, all of the workers in our community who participate in these landmark projects who have a hand in its uniqueness. A lot of hands touch these things and, and when we look at what the, the number of people on a project, there are times and there'll be 70 or 80 different sets of hands that will touch one project by the time it goes through the full gamut of design, fabrication, and so on. Meet Greg Brockman. He is president and owner of Magnum Companies. He is one of many contractors who works with the artists. It's, it's probably the pride and joy of our employees to be able to take their family on a weekend adventure or an, uh, an evening out to dinner or whatever and drive by some of the projects that we've worked on and point out to, the, to their family that you know, we fabricated that or I specifically welded that or I specifically you know, operated the water jet that cut the holes in that material. It's an important partnership between the artists who envisions the idea and the fabricators or engineers who make it a reality. I says, whose crazy idea is this? But then again, on the other hand, I thought what a fun challenge this would be to take a floor and make it look like a tapestry rug with terrazzo. Terrazzo is a old world craftsmanship uh, type of work. It's not something like you pour a large slab of cement and, and you're done very quickly. It's something that takes a lot of skill and a lot of years to learn. It's like, uh, like rolling dough. You know, you, you go like this and then back like this, back and forth. Doing this work, you spend a lot of time hunched over on your hands and knees. It's hard on your back. Um, it's hard on your knees, your arms, pretty much everything. No matter how bad it looks, in the beginning stages, it will always turn out to be a beautiful floor. I remember going out, and this was after we had uh, polished and sealed and waxed it. You know, it was real shiny, shiny like a diamond. And you go in there in the morning at 5, 5.30, with just the downlights coming on it, it was just breathtaking. I feel like an artist. Uh, how many people can say, uh, that they do something and then come back 50 years later and, and it's still a beautiful floor. Residents, visitors, and school children alike enjoy and appreciate the art that surrounds and beautifies Phoenix. Public art works in Phoenix and connects communities.